Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarbera. This is AP Physics Chapter 3, Video 2. Today's topic is acceleration vector. The objectives are know why an object can have acceleration if its speed is constant. Be able to determine acceleration vector. Also, interpret the components of acceleration parallel to and perpendicular to its path. The acceleration vector can result in change either in magnitude or direction of velocity. Consider the car is turning from P1 to P2. In this case, both the speed and the direction are changing. To find the car's average acceleration between P1 and P2, we first have to find a change in velocity. If we uh, have both vectors starting from the same point, change velocity would be in the same direction as from the tip of V1 to the tip of V2. That is delta V equals V2 minus V1. This is because V1 plus delta V equals to V2. Since A equals to delta V over delta T, so A must have the same direction as delta V. So since delta V is pointing this direction, A has to point to the same direction. So by definition, average acceleration is change velocity over change of time. Acceleration must have the same direction as delta V. Instantaneous acceleration is defined as the limit of average acceleration as delta T approaches to zero. Instantaneous acceleration has its components. That is because V is a vector quantity, V has components. So A equals to dVx divided by dt, uh, I mean dVx over dt, dVy over dt plus dVz over dt. And since V is derivative of a position vector, so A is double derivative of position vector as well. So Ax equals to dVx over dt, Ay is dVy over dt, Az is dVz over dt. It's also double derivative of position vector. The magnitude of A is a uh, Pythagorean theorem. It can be calculated through, through Pythagorean theorem. Direction of instantaneous acceleration. To find instantaneous acceleration A at P1, we take the limit of average acceleration as P2 approaches to P1. So when P2 approaches to P1, V2 will become, over here, it's very, very close to V1. So the difference between the two, that is delta V, is from the tip of V1 to the tip of V2. That is delta V. Instantaneous acceleration is the limit of average acceleration. As delta T approaches to zero, both delta V and the delta T approaches to zero. So since acceleration is defined as limit of delta t approaches to zero, has the same direction as delta v, so acceleration is pointing in the same direction as delta v. Instantaneous acceleration always pointing toward a concave side of the path. So let's take a look at this example to figure out uh, acceleration vector. First, we have to find components of average acceleration in the interval between time t equals to 0 to time equals to 2 seconds. Here is x um, as a function of time and y as a function of time. To find acceleration, average acceleration, first we have to find velocity as a function of time. Velocity equals to dx over dt, so we have negative 0.5t. Vy equals to dy over dt, that gives us 1 plus 0 0.075 t squared. Acceleration, average acceleration is change of v over t. So ax is change of vx over t, gives you 0.5. So you simply substitute a time in the vx function to get 0.5 times 2 give you uh, negative 0.1 minus 0 divided by 2, that's how you get point, negative 0.5. Similarly, that's how you get Ay equals to 0.15 meters per second squared. To find instantaneous acceleration, you'll have to do the derivative again, dvx over dt. That gives you Ax, d 
dBy over dt that gives you Ay. To find its magnitude, you use Pythagorean theorem. To find a direction, you use inverse tan. Inverse tan, when you do this, it will give you negative 31 degrees because of A lies in the second quadrant. So you have to use 180 degrees minus 31 degrees. That will give you 149 degrees. <clears throat> so acceleration is pointing into concave side of the curve. So when it points to concave side of the curve, it can have two components. This component is not AX or AY, but A parallel or A perpendicular. A parallel is parallel to the path, parallel to velocity. Perpendicular is perpendicular to the path or perpendicular to the velocity. Parallel means how fast the velocity is changing, the speed is changing. So parallel component indicate the magnitude, how fast the magnitude changes. Perpendicular component tells you how fast the direction changes. So uh, parallel components is really the derivative of speed. So it tells you how fast the speed is change. Perpendicular component, how fast object's direction is changing, or how fast it's turning. So a particle moves along a, three, a curve of the path. There are three scenarios. First, when speed is constant along the curve of the path. If speed is constant, there is no, ch no change in speed. So acceleration only has perpendicular component. Acceleration is normal to velocity or normal to the path. When the speed is increasing, A parallel has the same direction as V. So acceleration points ahead of normal. When the speed is decreasing, acceleration has a parallel component that's opposite of V. So acceleration is behind the normal. Let's take a look at this example. We have the same x function as t and y as t. This time, you need to find the parallel and the perpendicular components relative to velocity. Here is a diagram. So we have found acceleration, the magnitude, and the direction. So we want to find a parallel and a perpendicular. First, we have to find the angle between A and V. The angle between the two is 21 degrees. This is obtained by subtracting 149, uh, subtracting 128 from 149. A parallel equals A cosine 21. It is cosine because this side, parallel is adjacent to this angle. Adjacent is cosine. That gives you 0.54 meters per second squared. A perpendicular is the one that's opposite of this angle, so that is sine. What does A parallel mean? Again, A parallel indicates how fast the speed is changing. Because A parallel is positive, that means A parallel has the same direction as V, that means its speed is increasing at a rate of 0.54 meters per second every second. Now, a perpendicular is not zero. That means the path is a curve. It's changing directions. Now, let's take a look at this example. A skier moves along a ski jump ramp as shown in the figure. The ramp is straight from A to C onward. The skier picks up speed as she moves downhill from A to point E, draw the direction of acceleration vector at points B, D, and E, B, D, E, and F. So acceleration vector looks like this. Let's see why that is. So at point B, only speed is changing. Direction is not changing. Speed is increasing. So acceleration has the same direction as V. A perpendicular equal to zero, A equals A parallel. At D, speed is still increasing. So <clears throat> your A is ahead of normal. At point E, velocity, I mean speed is maximum. If speed is maximum, A parallel equals to zero because A parallel is derivative of speed over time. That equals to zero. So A is just 
equals to a perpendicular. At f, you are slowing down. Also change directions, so a is behind the normal. Test your understanding. A sled travels the crest of a snow-covered hill. The sled slows down as it climbs up one side of the hill, then gains speed as it de descends on the other side. Which of the vectors 1 through 9 in the figure correctly shows the direction of the sled's acceleration at a crest? Choice 9 is the acceleration equals to 0. So let's see. As it goes up, its speed uh, decreases. So at this point, at the crest of the hill, speed is mi minimum. Same thing, when it's minimum, the derivative of speed relative to um, time is zero. So at the crest, the speed is minimum. That means the derivative equals to zero. That means a parallel equals to zero. So the only acceleration is a perpendicular. Therefore, the answer is a seven. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.